this panel, as the name says, is about life after shock. I mean, many people worked here on the shock project, so we are all alive, and that's, uh, I think we can safely say that there is a life after shock, but uh, it's about what kind of life, right? And uh, so my, my task here is the difficult one to kind of give you in three minutes an idea of what uh, shock is within the framework of, of the EOSC. And so uh, there is a, the EOSC is very much a work in progress. So uh, there's a lot of de de definitional issues also, but uh, generally speaking, we can all agree that it aims at creating a trusted open environment for sharing um, scientific data and for reusing them. But most crucially, it is conceived as a, a kind of a, uh, bringing together existing and future data infrastructure. So it's not just a monolithic uh, thing. And indeed, we can ask ourselves as infrastructures, what are we uh, doing in the, in the EOSC? Um, more concre concretely, infrastructures such as Clarin, Daria, or CESDA, they are or can become members of the EOSC Association, the European Open Science Cloud. And they are uh, members of a specific type, namely data, uh, so, sorry, service providers. And for instance, Clarin will provide services such as the VLO, the switchboard to, uh, to the EOS catalog. Uh, otherwise, Clarin also and other infrastructures are providing expertise, for instance, by uh, participating in the task forces, uh, uh, for instance, uh, this one on research engagement is also co-chaired by, by Francisca and some of us here are also participating in other task forces of the EOSC. Last but not least, um, uh, infrastructures will participate in the consortia of uh, many of these uh, project, funded projects that are currently creating, building various aspects of the EOSC. And notably, to come to the topic of today's uh, panel, last panel, we, uh, we, we, there were a group of, of uh, projects that are special. They are the EOS cluster projects. Uh, they were launched around 2019, around there. And uh, there, there were five in numbers. And they uh, kind of were meant to integrate very five uh, disciplinary domains, infrastructures from five disciplinary domains, uh, around five uh, clusters, so that they could consolidate their services and bring them uh, to, the, to the EOSC. So we will hear about the shock project, which was led by CESDA and where other infrastructures of our domain uh, participated. But in general, I would like to stress the fact that uh, there is important added value in uh, research infrastructures collaborating in these, uh, in these clusters, namely uh, not only bringing services and tools uh, and data to, to, to the EOSC, but also our user communities. And by doing so and participating in the EOSC, we can also shape uh, uh, the vision, uh, the future vision of the EOSC and provide these interesting uh, multidisciplinary use cases that really make the case for the EOSC for sharing uh, the data at uh, such a broad uh, level. So now I think I can hand over to Car invite Karsten to, to the floor for a presentation about uh, the actual shock project. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. So I'll try briefly explain a bit what the shock project was about. Uh, as you heard, my name is Carsten Thiel. I work for SESTA, ERIC, the Consortium of European Social Science Data Archive. Um, I heard earlier in the coffee break already, what am I doing here? This is the wrong infrastructure. Um, what I'm trying to convince you now is that no, that's not the case. Um, and the reason for that is our collaborative project, the shock project, it ran for 40 months. Uh, it came to an end about half a year ago, at least when it comes to actually writing the deliverables. Um, formally, we resubmitted last week the final report. If it's the last one, then the project now is actually finally over. Um, but over these 40 months, we had 53 organizations from lots of different areas in the social sciences and humanities uh, working together. We've heard examples earlier of, of these collaboration um, with a not insignificant budget of almost 15 million euros. And we did achieve a lot of things. There is There are 33 so-called shocking key exploitable results. Um, 
this slide obviously as always with these nice pictures it's far too hard to read on this slide but you can find it all in the shock legacy booklet that's linked from the web page um, these are the results that are becoming available that the infrastructures the organizations participating in the shock project are sustaining are making available in the future beyond the life of the project um, working as a community working together on that as well one of the core services and it's the big logo on top is the shock marketplace that we'll hear about in a minute but now that the project is over that doesn't mean that we stop working together that we stop collaborating which is one of the reasons why i'm here today uh, and that is the shock open cluster so we found a way to continue the acronym. Um, we have a memorandum of understanding that we've signed between the ERICs at the moment. And we're currently in the processes of establishing the governance board, rules of procedures, and so on. We then need to uh, elect a chair. We need to come up with an annual work program. All of this is currently going on. And we hope to very soon um, start also have new members onboarded. The core idea is maintaining the shock results. As I said, some, many of those will be maintained by some of the organizations who maybe brought them in, then they were developed further, and now they are providing them further. But some of them are also new that we need to find different ways for it, the marketplace being one of them. Um, yeah, and most importantly, making sure that we continue as a community because one of the things we saw in the project is that we did really manage to collaborate on many different levels, um, both on the content that we needed to deliver, the deliverables. We've heard earlier from the uh, Core Trust Seal certification uh, that was very helpful to many archives. Uh, also on the technical level, we've come a lot of steps further. And now we continue discussions me being a technical guy, lots of technical discussions with the EOSC, with the European Open Science Cloud, how all this onboarding actually works and what's behind this. There's lots of things going on and we continue this in the future. Thanks. Thanks, Karsten. Thank you for um, uh, the opportunity to, to present the SSH Open Marketplace. So it's, as Karsten mentioned, one of the outputs of the shop project. So one of the services developed during this project I'm also an outsider, but not really, as we will see, because I come from Daria, but I'm now acting as a chief moderator for the SSH Open Marketplace, which became um, uh, a joint initiative of uh, SESDA, Clarin, and Daria through the, the, the SSH uh, Open uh, Cloud project. So the, the marketplace, the discovery portal, you can see here the, the front page if you want to visit it. Uh, we developed it uh, during the, the shock project. It's now maintained and funded by SESDA, Clarin, and Daria. So it's a catalog of, um, of different content types. So we have five main content types that you can see also here, tools and services, training materials, publications, data sets, and workflows. So what it means uh, for... Yes. So what it looks like for a training material, for example, in this catalog, you can see here one example that you see the entry uh, of the training uh, material in the catalog, uh, all the metadata on the uh, right side uh, of, the, of the screen. And what we uh, really think is an added value of this catalog is actually the contextualization layer around it. So these relations between items that you can uh, create in the catalog itself. Um, another um, step in the contextualization, if you wish, is actually the workflow type. So it's a, a special kind of animal in, in our uh, catalog because it's uh, like a research scenario. So it's based on a real um, research use case presented step by step. And at each step is that are actually attached uh, some resources. So you, you can see here an example of a create a dictionary in TEI. And what is uh, especially interesting in, in our context here is that this um, service, so the SSH Open Marketplace is actually, so we need to maintain it. It has been created during a project that is now over, how to maintain it. So it's like a, a kind of trinity. So we have three ERICs that are funding the, the service. The service provision is ensured by um, a two partner institution. Um, of, of, uh, of these different ERICs. We have an editorial board that is uh, ensuring the day-to-day -day operations of the, of the service, so meaning a lot of curation. So curation is a never-ending story in this 
uh, context, but we are working hard to ensure that we can actually uh, make the, the catalog grow and uh, ensure that resources that are in are actually relevant for the different communities. So at the moment, uh, something that I did not mention is that we have around 5,000 resources, uh, some of them uh, coming directly from the Clarin environment. So we are uh, in the process, as I speak to uh, the resource families uh, visible in the marketplace. Um, and the, the, the third part of this uh, trinity is actually the connection with the, with the user community. So with the, with the researcher and support staff that are um, contributing directly because we envision the curation as a collective uh, endeavor in that, in, that uh, in our context. So we um, also believe in ends on session as it was uh, presented in the in the paper just before to actually make sure that uh, that researchers and, and support staff can contribute directly to the to the collective curation of this catalog. And uh, all of this under the umbrella of the SSH open cluster. Thanks a lot. I guess that we have uh, still a couple of minutes for some questions. Um, see raised hands yet. So maybe I will ask one question myself to both of you. Uh, so uh, in fact, shock was the first project to finish right, of the five clusters. And so the first to have to start um, with this process of memorandum of understanding. So maybe you, you can say something more about uh, how um, you see also uh, the collaboration with the other clusters and how uh, our example in a way has uh, led the, the way if, if, you, if you want. So I don't know who wants to start first. Maybe Karsten. Yeah, so Shock was the first of the cluster projects to end. Um, the others are all still ongoing, which sometimes can cause confusion because in EOSC, everybody thinks we're still a project and have lots of PMs to do all the work. Um, the, but it's not just within the cluster that we're collaborating. There are also meetings with the other clusters, um, discussions on um, how the science clusters as such are represented in the bigger EOS picture. Um, for instance, in this uh, huge EOS future projects, there is um, one work package dedicated to what's called science projects, uh, 10 cross-cluster collaborations where we're trying to build services directly for researchers uh, on specific domains, uh, on specific uh, questions and topics. Um, and of course, we also see it looking into the collaboration with the EOSC Association as an entity. So all these are also, there is some coordination going on in that direction as well. Thanks. Yeah, maybe I will um, highlight more when it, uh, what happens when it comes to catalogs. So there are also similar experiences in other cluster projects of building catalogs, either focusing only on services, because this is also uh, how the EOS catalog uh, started itself, um, but some others focus on software cataloging, some others on, on data. So there is also a big topic around the, the connection as well between these different types of catalogs. So this is what is now of, of interest. So collaboration started during the shock project. And now it's the time to find other uh, platforms for interaction. So it can be via a new project such as EOSC Future, but it's also very important to have the, the, the framework that, that has been built via the, the memorandum of understanding for the, for the shock and to see that other clusters are also building such a things because then we can also exchange on, on, on the, at the same a level or under the same framework or with a common kind of organization, so which facilitates the conversation sometimes. Thanks a lot. And any questions from the audience? Uh, uh, Andreas? Yes. Um, we all know that we are uh, listed among uh, the term SSH, uh, social science and humanities. But uh, when talking with each other, we also see lots of differences. So from the sciences, everything is the same. So where is these are not the hard sciences from their point of view. But have you seen some problems in communication? Have you seen problems in conceptualizing some uh, area, some terms differently? Or does it, did it work smoothly? I mean, yeah, as you're saying, so there's lots of differences in, in practice. Uh, 
most linguists won't be so interested in, for instance, social science survey, which is the kind of data we have and, and deal with. Um, but as I said, on, on a technical on technical levels, there is much more collaboration. So we've been doing a lot, for instance, on vocabularies, uh, aligning those, um, because what we see is that cross-disciplinary research is uh, more and more important, and we need to find ways of making that possible. And linking such uh, vocabulary systems or thesauri against each other to allow cross-domain uh, understanding of what are the topics uh, in, in this corpus. Um, I know, hard term to use, um, no, dangerous term to use, um, but that's kind of the where we see possibilities or the, the organizational discussions we had with establishing this collaboration for the uh, open marketplace, how we do this model um, that these two entities are operating it and the two, three ERICs are together financing it. So these kinds of models, um, those are very helpful for us to understand further because we think there are other services where this could be relevant. Maybe just an addition, but it might be an anecdotal one, but we also see the benefits of having common glossaries more at the level of the project management or at the level of the cross-cluster collaboration. And it's like all the time uh, discussions and then moving targets in terms of definitions also for these glossaries themselves. But it's it's how the, the collective can, can continue working together kind of, and also building the, the final goal. <laughs> so, uh, I think it's still quite work in progress. And uh, so we, we will see the benefits uh, of this, these extended collaborations uh, more and more as, as we go as we go ahead, right? Um, any last minute uh, question? Um, otherwise, I think that the time uh, at our disposal, this was a very short uh, panel, is almost uh, over. So I think that we can uh, safely say that, yeah, there, there is life after shock and long live the SSH open cluster and the marketplace. <laughs> so thanks to the panelists and I'm sure there will be opportunities to discuss this further as we go along. <laughs>